Okay, so today we're talking about the area of trapezoids, kites, and rhombuses. Um, just to review really quick, all we've talked about is the area of a parallelogram, which that does include then all parallelograms, so that's rectangles, um, squares, and rhombuses already. Uh, and then also we talk about triangles in any shape. You know, a polygon can be cut up into some finite number of triangles, and then you can add up those areas. So really, we can already cut things apart and figure out the areas in terms of rectangles and triangles and parallelograms. But now we're going to look specifically at these other shapes, okay? A couple things to note is any side of this figure could be the base. Just because this is on bottom doesn't mean it has to be the base. I could have just as easily chosen this side on the side of this parallelogram to the base and then the height i use must be perpendicular to this one so it must have a right angle with this chosen base um, but i absolutely could use this base right here i mean i could do it in another color i could call this one you know the b and then do this height in this direction and same thing for a triangle any height could be the base i could have chosen this side to be the base and then my height would have to be perpendicular to that side. So that the base and the height must be perpendicular. Okay, so that being said, let's first look at the area of a trapezoid, okay? So basically all we know about a trapezoid is we can draw the mid-segment. We talked about that in the past. Um, I mean, really the one other thing is we said that also since these two lines are parallel, then the consecutive angles must sum to 180 degrees. But really, that and the length of the mid-segment is all we've talked about. Well, let's just put that mid-segment in here, okay? I drew it in blue here. Uh, the length is the average of the two bases. So to write those in, here's base 1 and base 2 in any order, right? So the mid-segment is the length of those um, two bases added together and divided by 2, okay? Well, now let's draw... I drew this line perpendicular to the two bases. And the bases are the sides of the trapezoid that are parallel. So I drew this down on both sides through that midpoint. And I made sure that I had a right angle on top and bottom here and here. Okay. So let's look at what happens. Well, in orange now, I could rotate these new triangles and I could swing them up into here. And your question would obviously be like, well, do they fit exactly in that spot? And look at what we can do. We can say, okay, well... Obviously, these lengths are the same since the midpoint cuts it to two congruent segments. Also, we have a right angle in both, so the right angles must be the same. And then we have vertical angles here and here. So yeah, by AAS, those two triangular regions are congruent. Okay, so if the triangles are congruent, I can just take that triangle on both sides and flip it up into that spot. So look what we have now. We now have a rectangle, right? Because of these right angles in each corner, we have a rectangle where one length, or I mean the height is the same as the original shape, but the length of this shape has gone from this short base and this long base to now, we have just the distance between those two midpoints. Because again, we, we took this triangle that stuck out below and we swung it around the midpoint and put it in this spot up here so now we've got a length that is the mid-segment times the same height as the original. So the area, since the area of any rectangle is just base times height, we could rearrange a trapezoid and make it this rectangle for every single trapezoid. So what we end up getting is the, the um, area of any single trapezoid is just that mid-segment, right? This is just the mid-segment and then times the height. All right, and I'll even write that in here in pink, is this is just the length of the mid-segment, right? Just the length of the mid-segment and then times the height. Okay, and clearly in the picture I labeled where the B1 and B2 and the height come from in the picture, noticing that, of course, this must be a right angle and that the bases refer to the two sides that are parallel. Okay, got that. Now, let's look at the area of a kite and a rhombus. Now, we already have one way. We already know a rhombus is a parallelogram, so we can use uh, base times height. We already knew that one, but we're going to look at it a little differently now. We're going to say, okay, well, remember that both a kite and a rhombus, as we draw them, 
are symmetrical if we cut them down the middle between their diagonals. Right? We get by side, 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 we get that the triangles on the two sides are symmetrical. So we've got this perfect line of symmetry if we cut it down their diagonal. So that means we've got two congruent triangles, one on each side. Okay, now remember what we did yesterday in the last lesson. The last lesson was we could take any triangle rotated 180 degrees, right? If I've got any triangle, if I rotate it 180 degrees about its midpoint, we get it up here forming a parallelogram. That's what we prove by alternate interior angles. We get that for sure as a parallelogram. So any two congruent triangles could be placed edge to edge to form a parallelogram. So let's do that. So let's take a kite and a rhombus. Let's cut it down the middle like this black line here cuts it down the middle symmetrically. And what I do then is I take this bottom triangle and I actually, the way I think about it, is I flip it up first so it lands on top of itself. So now I've got two copies of the same triangle, like I fold a book or I fold a piece of paper. So the bottom triangle lands exactly on top. So I've got two triangles on top of each other, exactly the same. And then just like yesterday, I rotate one around the midpoint of this side. And as I rotate it 180 degrees, it ends up completing the parallelogram by landing right here. So what we get then, after we flip it up and rotate it, we get parallelogram in both cases. Now, we know the area of a parallelogram is just base times height, right? So what we got to figure out is what are the dimensions of this? Well, this length here that's the base is just the length of one of the diagonals. It doesn't matter which diagonal um, in the right case. In the left case, it's the non, it's the one that's not bisected. It's from the vertex angles, but we'll see that later that doesn't matter. But the base is this length of the diagonal, right? That's the base of your thing here. And I'll, I'll write that in pink. This is just the original diagonal of the kite. This is, again, just a diagonal of the kite. Here we go. On the left, it was a rhombus. But, well, that's a terrible draw. I can't draw over that. All right? So now let's look at the height, okay? So the height here was bisected because we drew this line of symmetry perfectly because it was symmetrical on top and bottom, which means this length is cut in half. So we get half of this diagonal on top, half of the diagonal on bottom. Same thing over here. This line cuts its, the rhombus symmetrically. So we get half of the diagonal on top and half on bottom. So the height of our shape is just half of the other diagonal and we get half of the other diagonal so if we just multiply base times height here for these two things, we get one half, right? This being the height, this being the base. So we get the area of that parallelogram form is just one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. So for every single kite and every single rhombus, because they're symmetrical over that line, we can rearrange them and see that actually the area <clears throat> of every kite and every rhombus can be found by multiplying the two diagonals together. And I, I wrote right here, D1 and D2 refer to the whole lengths of the two diagonals, right? D, they don't matter which order, but D2 being this one, D1 being this one, vice versa doesn't matter. So D1 in this picture representing the horizontal, D2 representing the entire length of the vertical one. So you just multiply those two lengths, d1 times d2, and then divide it by 2 or multiply by 1 half. Okay, so let's actually do some practice problems now. Uh, here are your formulas. Just to review, this is all we've got. we got the area of the triangle, 1 half base times height. Every parallelogram is base times height. Area of a kite or a rhombus. Notice that a rhombus is both a parallelogram and a rhombus. So you can actually use either of these formulas. And depending on the case, um, you might want to use a different one. And then finally, we have the area of a trapezoid. Okay, and that's its own formula. So let's go. So right away, it says, okay, let's use the area of the trapezoid. So the formula is right there above us. We've got, just to rewrite it, area is 1 half B1 plus B2 times H. I'm going to switch to a thinner pen. Let's go with for screen. So the area of this is one half. And the two bases here, it doesn't label which ones are parallel, which it should. 
but it does tell us this is a trapezoid and just we can clearly see that these are the two parallel sides. So our two bases are 8 and 11. So we're going to add 8 and 11 and divide by 2. So that would be the length of the mid-segment right there. One half of the two bases added together. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of the trapezoid. And the height of the trapezoid is 10. So that's 1 half times 19 times 10. The 1 half of 10 becomes 5 times 19. So our area is 95. Great, okay. Uh, now jumping forward, let's try our other formula here. We've got a rhombus first and then a kite. So first the rhombus, we know that we can use area equals 1 half d1 times d2, or we can do area equals base times height. Now, I know I can use either one, but which one do I want to use here? Well, we're given this length of the diagonal, and we're given the length of the other diagonal, so the easier one to use in this case would be the diagonal. So we got area equals 1 half the first diagonal, doesn't matter the order, is 50 times the second diagonal is 60. So that's going to be, um, let's see, 6 times that, so it'd be 3,000, I believe, and then times 1 half. So we get that the area is uh, 15. Okay, did I add a zero there by accident? Let's see, five times that would be 600 times 10. No, that was, that's right, I think. Okay, so now I want to mention too, you can always think of these shapes as being cut up into triangles. And so in some circumstances, like in number 12, if you've totally forgotten the formula, you don't have any notes or anything, you could always say, well, I do know that in, um, a kite or a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. And so you could just say, well, here the area of this thing is 1 half times 2 times 4. The area of this triangle is 1 half times 2 times 5. You could say, well, I know it's the same triangle on top and bottom because of that symmetry. So you could just times this top triangle by 2 times this top triangle by 2. You get every single area you need, sum them up. You can always deal with this in terms of triangles. However, let's practice our new formula. That's a great backup, is to realize that you can always deal with this in terms of cutting it into triangles. But just right now, let's, let's put that aside as a plan B, as a backup plan for test, quiz, hard problem, and use the formula. So we know the area of a kite is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Well, we got area equals 1 half. We know one diagonal is 4 plus 5 long. And what's the other diagonal? Well, we got 2 plus question mark. But we know because it's side, 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 this triangle on top is side, 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 the same as the bottom triangle. We know that this must be 2 on the bottom just because of that symmetry. And so we get that the other full diagonal is 2 plus 2 or 4. So we get 1 half of 9 times 4, 1 half of 36, which is 18. Okay, and again, you could have cut it into triangles and got the exact same thing. <clears throat> okay, so here are a couple errors um, that we want to just look through, okay? Let's look at the first one. So the first one says, okay, find the area of this thing. So we got 1 half um, B1 plus B2, we got times height. I identify this as a trapezoid. Um, now, I didn't write that the lines are parallel, but any times you have two things that are perpendicular, saying that's a 180 degree turn, that would mean this top line is parallel to the bottom. So we do know this is a trapezoid. Okay, so let's see, we got one half, uh, the top base plus the bottom base times the height is 12, and let's see what they did. One half, yeah. They added the two bases, yeah, and then they used 13. Oh, there's the mistake. 13 is that slanted length. Um, if you want to find the height of an object, you don't say like a random diagonal is 19 long, or you know this one is 17 long, or this one is 16 long. You say the shortest possible distance perpendicular to both, like perpendicular straight at it is, and it'll be the shortest distance, so maybe it's something like 13. So in this case, the slanted length was 13, but the shortest distance perpendicular to both bases 
the height of this thing was 12, and that was the mistake there. Um, and then, yeah, just go ahead and calculate it. So that's going to be 1 half of 12 is 6 times, and I'll just move this out of the way. So we got 6 times 33. Ooh, so that's 180 and 18, so that should be 198, I think. Okay, and again, the key there was they chose the wrong height instead of 13. This is not the height. Okay, all right, so let's look over at the second one. So it says find the area. So in this case, we got a couple options, right? You've got this is 16, this is 5. Because of the symmetry, we know both sides of this are 12. We know it's got left-right um, symmetry over that middle. So we know that this is of 12, too. So again, now, because the um, diagonals of a kite and a rhombus are perpendicular, we could just use, well, I mean, lots of, lots of things we could do here. But one thing is we could cut this into triangles. And because of the right angles, we've got the base and the height. We find the area of the four triangles. We add them together. Uh, we could even use the top isosceles triangle, the entire thing, and say the base is 24, the height is 5, find the area of that triangle. Then the base here is again 24, the height is 16. We got another isosceles triangle, add them together. Uh, we could use Pythagorean theorem to find the side lengths if that somehow ended up being needed or useful, like if it asked for the perimeter of the shape. So there's lots of stuff we could do here, but Specifically, since we already have the lengths of the diagonals, we know that we can just say it's one half diagonal one times diagonal two. So one half times the full diagonal one way is 12 plus 12. The full diagonal the other way is 5 plus 16. So we get one half of 24 and 21. So let's look up here what they got. They got, oh, they got the one half and the 21, but they didn't get 24. They got 12. And so the problem was they only used half of the diagonal. You need the whole diagonal, right? So it's one half times the entire diagonal one way, the entire diagonal the other way. And so that was the problem there. Okay. And then it's just arithmetic from there. So that would be one half of 24 is 12 times 21. Now oh, it's got some beautiful symmetry just looking at it, but off the top of my head, 20 times that would be 240 plus another 12, I think 252, I believe. Okay. So now, again, we got one of these algebra problems. So it's saying now I'm going to give you the answer. So I know that out of the area formula, and this I identify as a trapezoid. So out of the area formula is going to come 108. So, okay, so the answer that came out was 108. All right, so 1 half. And now i got to fill in what I know about this formula. So what do I know? I know the two bases are 22 plus 24 times, oh, and the height. That's what I want to find. So let's leave that as x. And now we're going to have to use some algebra to solve this. Well, really, this is analogous to, like, 6 equals 3 times x because, really, it's just... Whoops, it's just a number times x equals a number. Now, the numbers are a little bigger, a little more difficult, so let's simplify this a little bit. So 1 half of, and this is 46, and that's times x, so that's 23x equals 103. And so my one step to solve for x is just divide by 23. I mean, this was just an analogous problem. The numbers didn't have any real meaning here. So x equals, um, oh, I don't think that's going to work out evenly. Let's double check that I didn't make a mistake. Oh my gosh, I did make a mistake. So I'm going to change that really quick. This was not a 24. It was a 14. So let's erase these numbers really quick and just go back and fix this. So this was 22 plus 14 were the two bases. So that's 1 half of 36, or 18x. So we divide both sides by 18. And we get, ooh, let's see, 5 of those would be 90, so 6 of those, I believe. Yeah, 6 of those. So x is 6 in that case. Okay, so over here on the other side, again, it tells us the answer is, so using the same formula for the area, 
we get one half of base one plus base two times h. We get the answer comes out to be 300. We get one half of plugging there are two bases. We get 10 plus x. So it's going to be a little harder algebraically times the height of 20. Now again, it doesn't matter which um, side is on bottom. That is no relevance on which side is the base. The bases here were because it was parallel. That's how I identified that these were the bases because they're the parallel sides. And then the perpendicular part told me this was the height. Okay, so let's just solve this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. So I know since this is all a product, this is 1 half times parentheses times 20. I'm going to say that's 10 times 1 half of 20 is 10 times 10 plus x. So distributing that in, or I could have divided both sides by 10. Either way, you want to look at it. Okay, so distributing that in, I get 100 plus 10x equals 2, whoops, equals 300. So subtracting 100 from both sides, just following through the algebra. 10x is 200, dividing by 10, dividing by 10, we get x equals 20. Okay, and you can always go back and plug these in just to make sure that the result does come out to be 300. And that's something that's really worthwhile, especially on a quiz or a test where you want to take pride in that work. I understand if you're rushing through homework and you don't, but I would still recommend checking your work. However, on a test or quiz where points really matter, I would definitely double check my work just by plugging that 20 back in, just right back up here and seeing, okay, is one half 10 plus 20, so that's one half of 30, that's 15 times 20, 15 times 20 is 300. Hey, it worked out, right? And it can be really quick and just be on a calculator. Okay, so the last two problems we're gonna do together here are composite figures, so made of more than one shape, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is this one. I would see this as cutting it here and seeing the area of a trapezoid plus the area of a rectangle. That's how I would see this. So the area of a trapezoid, one half b1 plus b2 times h, plus the area of the rectangle, just base times height. So back to green, let's see what we got here. We got, oh, and opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, especially of a rectangle too. So we got 10 on top and 5 on the right. And that means if we have a total height of 7, right, and then some of it is 5, well, then the remaining height here must be 2. And we have that this was perpendicular at the bottom, so that height is still perpendicular. It's going straight against that base. So let's look at this. We've got um, 1 half of base 1 is 10. Again, I'm just looking at the trapezoid up on top. So the two bases are 7 plus 10 times the height of 2 plus, and base times height of the rectangle is 5 times 10. So 1 half of 2 is just 1. So we get the area of the trapezoid is 17, plus the area of the rectangle is, whoops, 50. So we get an area of 60, oh my goodness, 67 total. Okay. Over on the right here, again, I would see this as, I'm going to cut this into two shapes. I see this as... I'm going to go to pink so you can see this. Right. I see this as the area of a diamond shape. And since all the sides are congruent, I see this as a rhombus. And then I add the area of a parallelogram. Okay, so I know the parallelogram is base times height. The rhombus, I got two things I could choose from. I could either do base times height, but since just looking at this, any side, I don't have any right angles against that side. I don't have any right angles against this side. The only right angle I have are dealing with the diagonals. So I see I'm probably going to choose the one half diagonal one diagonal two formula. Might not work out. I might need to change uh, my plan. Also, again, I could have absolutely solved this by just finding the separate area for triangles and adding it to a parallelogram. A hundred percent correct. Okay, so one half diagonal one times diagonal two. Uh, in my picture here, and I'm just gonna erase what I've written so far so I can uh, see clearly. So I know all the single dashes are four. So oops, I've got four and four and four. All my double dashes are five and five and 
5 and 5. So look what I've got, right angle in the middle, a 4 and a 5, I know the missing side is 3. You could use the Pythagorean theorem, but I'm just really comfortable with 3, 4, 5 as a Pythagorean triple. And so now I've got all the sides I need. So the area of my rhombus is diagonal 1, 3 plus 3, times diagonal 2, 4 plus 4, times 1 half plus the base and height of my parallelogram. So if I were to choose five as my base, which is totally okay, I would need a side perpendicular to five. I don't have a side perpendicular to that. If I choose four as my base, it doesn't seem like, oh, wait a second, over here, I do have a side perpendicular, saying from this line here, perpendicular to it, up to this line, is a distance of three. So I do know the height, if I choose my base as 4, the height is 3. So if a base is 4, then my height is 3. And then I just get 1 half of 6 times 8 plus 12. So that's 1 half of 6 is 3. So 3 times 8 plus 12, 24 plus 12, that's 36. Okay, that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go off and practice on your own. And good luck. I'll just leave this up for you. That's our shortcut there.